solve the system of equations using elimination. With elimination, we are going to add the two equations together and try to get one of the variables to completely go away. So you're looking for something like what we see right here, positive 2y and negative 2y. That's perfectly set up for elimination. So I'm going to add these two equations together. When we add these, 3x plus 5x will give us 8x. 2y and negative 2y will give us 0. We don't really need to write that down at all. And 2 plus 6 will give us 8. And now we have an equation with only one variable which we can solve. What do we need to do? Divide by 8. So x equals 1. So the first part of our solution is 1. Now we need to plug x equals 1 into one of our original equations, and we can pick which one we want. I would definitely pick positives if at all possible, so I'm going to pick this one. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2y equals 2. Subtract 3 on both sides to get 2y equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2 y equals negative one-half. And there's our solution. I feel like that was less work than substitution. With substitution, we'd have to get a letter by itself and then plug it into the other equation and then do some work and do some work. And sometimes elimination requires more work than this, but I feel like there's fewer opportunities to make mistakes. With substitution, there's more opportunities for mistake. All right, let's move to the next one. Now, this one, if we added these two equations together right now, would one of the variables go away? No. So I want you to look for a positive-negative match or the potential for a positive-negative match. So I see negative 3y. It'd be really nice if this was a positive 3y. Could we do something to make this become a positive 3y? We can't just stick a 3 in there. That's definitely not allowed. But we can multiply the entire second equation times 3. So the first equation, I'm going to leave it as is. 2x minus 3y equals negative 7. And the second equation, we are going to multiply every single thing in that equation by 3. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times y is positive 3y equals sign. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Now we're ready to add. 2x plus 9x is 11x. The y's will cancel each other out. Negative 7 plus negative 15 is negative 22. Divide both sides by 11 to get x equals negative 2. Now that we know x is negative 2, we have basically three options. We can put negative 2 into the x right here, but those numbers are kind of big. We could put it into the x in this original equation, but I see a lot of negatives there, and that's just kind of gross. So I am going to pick 3x plus y equals negative 5. 3 times negative 2. So instead of this x, we're putting negative 2 in its place. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Add 6 to both sides, and we get y equals 1. So our solution is negative 2, 1. If we were to rearrange both of these equations to make them both look like y equals mx plus b and not make any mistakes and graph them both without making any mistakes, they would cross at negative 2, 1. Take a look at example three. Do we have a positive-negative match? No. 
and we don't have a coefficient of one, so we can't just multiply one thing by something to make them match. So I look for a positive negative when possible. Sometimes you are going to end up with all positives. You might have to multiply by a negative. The chance of multiplying by a negative, that, that is a possibility. I am going to make my goal to have positive something y and negative something y. When you look at these y's, look at 3 and 4. What other number pops into your head? 12. Could we make 3y become positive 12y? Could we make negative 4y become negative 12y? So if we want 3y to become 12y, we will have to multiply by 4. To make negative 4y become negative 12y, we will need to multiply that one by 3. So take a moment and multiply those out. And then if you want to try finishing, go for it. Oops. Once you know that x equals 3, on this one we have four options. We can plug 3 in to, like we can do 20 times 3, we can do 6 times 3, we can do 2 times 3, or we can do 5 times 3. I would look through this and pick the equation with the smallest numbers that has the fewest negatives possible. So I'm going to choose this equation, 5x plus 3y equals 9. I feel like that will be the easiest one to deal with. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 3y equals 9. So 3y equals, is that negative 6? So y equals negative 2. And our solution is 3, negative 2. Even with both equations needing to be messed with, I still feel like this is less work than it would have taken to do substitution. Each system that you're given, you should really look at it and think which, which method would be the easiest. If we have something that's already written out, y equals blah, 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 then substitution is probably easier and would require less work. If both of them are written in standard form like this, where the x's match up, the y's match up, the numbers match up, then elimination is typically easier. All right. Oh, one more thing. If you're doing this and all of your variables eliminate, remember if you end up with a true statement like 0 equals 0, then it's all re like multiple many solutions. If you end up with a false statement like 0 equals anything other than zero, then it would be a no solutions. And here's your assignment.